Okay, here we go, overclocking on the cheap. We're going to start off with the Intel 2600K. The K means it's unlocked, so we can overclock it as we see fit. Its standard clocking is 3.4. We're going to try to go to 4.7. Diablo Tech? Are you kidding me? Well, it's got really good ratings, and it's a smoking deal. It should work out just fine in this system. Got this Kingston Ram about six months ago when it was cheap, cheap on Newegg. Really cheap, cheap. Great deal. Here we are with the weak link in the system, the Cooler Master $20 cooler. We're going to try to overclock to 4.7 gigahertz on a $20 cooler. <laughs> we'll see. Last but not least, a Gigabyte Z77 motherboard. It's a no-frills motherboard. Very inexpensive, but gets good ratings. It's supposed to be easily overclocking to 4.7. On the top, you can see a 4 gig USB. We're going to try to load Windows 7 from a USB. Unlike the last build, which was an E8500, this uh, 2600K is really flat. The integrated heat sink on the top is flat flat. Uh, 8500K was not, but this guy is just really perfect all the way across, so I'm not going to lap the heat sink. Uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is because it voids the warranty anyway. Why bother? Well, as I said before, this is kind of the weak link in the system. It's a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus. It's a $20 cooler, but you can't expect it to do what an $80 cooler it does, even though the bottom is fairly flat. It doesn't really, you can't really expect it to cool something down at uh, 4.7 gigahertz. So we're going to do some changes to it. So we're going to try and improve on it by sanding it down or lapping it. And we do that by taking a glass topped surface. I have a glass top table here. And we start with 400 and start working our way down. And we make it all the way to 2000 and we have basically a beautiful mirror finish on it. As you can see here by the right off the bat from sanding it, you can see some of it's shiny and some of it isn't. So it's not perfectly, perfectly flat. We're getting um, we're now getting all of these. This one, this one, this one. We're still not hitting this end one here. So it's um, everything's not perfectly flat, but at least we're getting closer now. As you can see, we're almost there. That bottom tube has still got some lines on it and I'm and I don't quite have it all buffed out but what's really amazing is that the main heat sink square part here is not being sanded yet so the, all the tubes are sitting slightly above that and that just seems to me like one more place where heat's not being transferred so here we are again all of the pipes are very flat and smooth. As we rotate this around, we can see that there are sections of the actual block that aren't getting touched at all. So here we are with it finally sanded all the way down to 2000 grit and it's all completely flat. You'll see some uh, another picture right here where it's nice and pretty and you'll actually see some reflections here off the CFL in the light bulb just above. Got the RAM, kind of groovy looking RAM. And the CPU is now mounted in there. Next is this. Not sure how that fits on there somehow. Looks like we got plenty of room. Yeah, tons of room. And here's the base place bracket for the uh, cooler that sits underneath the motherboard. So here we are. We're going to install the heat sink on the motherboard now. So several days later because I couldn't find my Arctic Silver anywhere and I had to buy some more. Down the middle. 
both the top of the uh, CPU and the uh, bottom of the cooler have been cleaned and we're going to install it. We're putting it in this direction because that direction is up and the big main fan will help suck the air out if I have the heat sink fan on, on this side. So another problem with a less expensive motherboard is there are no switches on it so you can do bench testing which is what I'm trying to do here so you have to use the switches from the uh, computer case to turn the thing on and off so that's what I'm doing right here. Before we don't forget we want to plug the USB stick because we're going to try and do a so we're going to try and start this up and see what happens. Mm, nothing. Now we're going into the system BIOS over here. Get a state to get out of here. Okay. SATA mode. NHCI. Oops. I keep pushing the wrong button. As you can see, the Windows files are loading from the USB, so it's just hauling. But I can't believe how quickly this has worked already. Uh, Windows 7 install now. Windows startup. Oh, I hope this works. Accept. Next. Next. The little thumb drive on the back is kind of working away. We are at 97%. It's been about eight minutes uh, of expanding the files. Let's see what happens next. Installing features. Up. Installing updates. Well, this is going to take a bit. I'll bet. Wow, it, it just is going into restart right now. And, and I think I blew it. I should have probably pulled that USB stick out of there. Yes. I'm pulling the USB stick out. Um, sure, not done that. Let me just screw things up. Completing installation, yeah, that's working right. Well, that was pretty foolproof. I just didn't mess things up. Okay, here we go again. It's just now it's restarting. Um, it's been about 15 minutes. Checking video performance, how useful, like who cares, I mean, like how, why would we, anybody with Windows 7 have anything but a, a fairly high speed computer? So here we are, I'm happy with this system, it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do, so I'm just going to try and set this up in the case. It's an Antec 900. Great case. Real quiet. See, this is what I mean by low-end motherboard. I mean, no glitzy backplate, 
no collars. Just a nice, perfectly running motherboard that will get you very close to 5.0 uh, gigahertz. It's the way to go. Had to use my high resolution glasses to read the pinout labels on the boards. Really little letters. So here it is, all nicely inside the case, fitting and working. Yay! So here we are after several iterations of running too hot and too cold and whatnot, but we're running now right here at 100%, as you can see. We got the voltage down to 1.356 volts, which is as low as it should be able to go at a uh, overclock speed of, as you can see, 4.7 gigahertz fabulous and it's running in the mid 60s i couldn't be more pleased the whole system was working perfectly and hasn't had any crashes or anything yet whoopee